Well, look, the time is really worrying. And first of all, I actually even didn't know how well my talk would fit into this panel because it was talking about education, Sharia, and secular state. But my friend Mariam thought that it fits perfectly. And I just thought I would take the opportunity to speak anyway. So I'm going to speak, but I really don't know how well um, it's going to connect uh, with everything I meant to say. And for also because Pragnadi has also already talked quite a lot about the gender bait and the violence and how Sharia operates in this state of UK. So I'm at, um, before Peter, please excuse me for one minute, because that's actually quite well goes quite well with our today's conference. Mm -hmm. One of the picture and the tribute that I want to pay to a Bangladeshi woman who was mistakenly not added to the tribute that Mariam added. So would you please go to the picture? And please note that the picture may upset some of you. If you don't want to see, we can move to the next one. Are you sad about that? Yeah, OK. So that looks better, because then she's small here. So this is the omen in Bangladesh. The reason that my, my main um, idea was to talk about how we fight Sharia back home in Bangladesh, which is known or supposedly a, a secular country, was actually born uh, as a secular nation. Um, they, they came out of um, Pakistan before I was born. But then what happens in this kind of country that this omen um, who has been murdered um, on the 10th of January, just three days after Charlie Hebdo event, because she criticized, she's a nurse, nurse uh, she was a teaching staff uh, in the nursing college uh, in Chittagong, um, which is quite predominantly uh, uh, fundamentalist Chittagong in the southwest Bangladesh, you might know. So the young Shibir Kedas, the Jamaat Islamist young group, has not only killed her, but has taken out her eyes because she criticized the enforced hijab uh, within the college. It was actually that she's a Hindu woman, but it, the, there was no kind of relevance to have a hijab for a Hindu woman. But it was enforced by the college that everyone, every single woman has to wear a hijab. And she protested and she said she wouldn't wear and she wouldn't let her colleagues and women who do not want to wear. So she was uh, killed, take, her eyes were taken off. And you can see what the reason, and I wanted to pay a tribute because the reason I wanted to show this picture is that you see those women who are crying, they're all wearing hijabs. They're all Muslims. So they actually have expressed a solidarity to a Hindu woman. And so when I uh, talk against the um, Paris attack or Charlie Hebdo, I have been saying that you are no longer Muslim, but I'm yet to be ex-Muslim, and I don't know what to go, because I really think that there is no better religion, so there is no need for me to convert. So let's move and come into the point. So I was born in this state, which is known as a secular state, and I know how Sharia operates even without its existence. Official exist officially, in Bangladesh, we don't have Sharia. We, sh we shouldn't have. So it is called Muslim personal law. But you can see what happens in Bangladesh. We can't go into that. Let's move to the UK bit. Next one. Because this bit, I have to cut off as I'm going running out of time. Now. One reason for me to be in the UK today was this kind of violence which I have just shown. That was just one story, but there are too many stories to go through. And I moved in, in the West in 2000. That was my first time with a scholarship as a feminist activist. Uh, I don't know if people get such a scholarship, but I was lucky enough to move beyond those not only Bangladesh, I actually wanted to move beyond the whole South Asia and the whole Asia because I had a whole perception that or impression that uh, Europe or the North is really open and free and safe and you can really do whatever you want to do because the states are meant to be secular. But look, 
I was really horrified. And the first day when I came in Germany in the student dormitory, the first message I got was that don't go out after 9 p.m. and come back by 6 p.m. in the dormitory as there was a rape and a young woman was missing. She was missing because she didn't get justice. I spent three years in Germany and I came back in UK because we now need to talk about UK. I came back to UK, but before that I realized that I'm not going to only talk about religion, you see, because I am a colored Muslim migrant woman in the UK talking here. And I don't, I don't have, even today, I don't have a, a citizenship. Therefore, I'm going to rather look into the intersectional perspective, the stereotypes, how colored or Muslim colored woman becomes really stereotypical religious stereotypes and this is done very well by the state, those state who are meant to be secular. When I came in UK, I thought, oh, Germany is conservative. Germany isn't my place. UK has a brand of multiculturalism. So I came here and I came to do my PhD. The first month, when I, because it's very much corresponding to what already Pragnadi has said, my first month in the UK, have I run out? One minute. Okay, just two minutes. Okay. Uh, hopefully. Uh, the first month when I came in London, I didn't know anybody. And again, because you are a Muslim woman, doesn't matter which state you belong to or where you are living in, you got to take the responsibility of your safety. I mean, this is my experience for the last seven years in the UK. I don't really find this state is securing or it's giving me enough safety, if I'm honest. And so I started to, to rent a room with a family, which was a Bengali Muslim family. The man, um, the landlord, had a second marriage, and uh, she had a daughter who was 14 years old, and he had a son, 16 years old. And he was so violent in the house that in a month time, I sort of ran away. I didn't take my deposit back because I thought that's mad because I can't do my PhD. So when I was moving away, Pragnadi knows this story I told you before, didn't I? When I was leaving, both the stepmother and the daughter both wanted to come out with me. And I thought that was strange. I'm a stranger. And the reason for both of them was that they couldn't access any legal support. What the state say, if when I tried to contact, because for the girl, I thought she was only 14 years girl, she really needed support. I thought, why doesn't your school teachers do? Oh no, school teachers should tell my dad that I'm not wearing hijab and I'm not doing this, I'm not good enough. So I wanted to contact a few legal uh, bodies. I didn't know you that time. And I was told, oh, let them deal with their problems. That's very delicate matter. So look, this is multiculturalism. This is a delicate matter. Never talk about anybody's family matter, even if it is religious. Yes, I must end. But I couldn't go into the conclusion in which I was going to talk about the way forward that how we could really do, because I don't really think that it's all about legal aid cards or things. I think there is a whole lot of intersectional issues that religion, talking about religious stereotypes doesn't help if you're not talking about racialization, racist stereotypes, and if you're not focusing on gender. So I know that I haven't covered the topic of theme of my paper, but I think I must stop now. Thank you. Mm -hmm.